Good morning everyone, this is my pre-Project Greenwing vlog. There is not much I can say. This is the most secretive I've ever been in my entire life. Oh, it's a blow of vacuum. Nice and loud for you. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm even filming in a way that you cannot see my geographic location. Because it's a secret, and I can't give it away. Anyways, uh, I have nothing to say other than I have nothing to say. So, I'll uh, bring this vlog back at the end of the day and answer some of your questions. You've all left some, some interesting questions and quite a lot of them. So, I'll, uh, I'll be back in a flash. You ready? One, two, three. Just like that, I am on my way home, or to Airbnb, I suppose I should say. And that was just amazing. That was one of the coolest experiences ever. And I'm so excited for this project that I can't tell you anything about. But my God, if it all comes off, I look forward to telling you more about what Project Greenwing is and how it's all come together. But until that mystery is revealed, you shall live in darkness. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get back, celebrate, I'll unwind tonight, have a couple of drinks, and I'll answer some of your questions, and hopefully I won't be in too messy a state to give decent answers. Hello. It's been some time since I've had steak and beer. So, we have arrived back at the house. I've had beer and steak, and half it's been burger. a good evening. And half of a burger and chocolate. Yes. So I'm going to gain all of my 10 kilos back. I'm also feeling very lazy and not like editing. So I'm going to see how much of this we can do in one take. Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to ask a bunch of the questions that you guys have put forward. And I'll, I'll see what I can do. Brandon Nicholas says, how do you style your hair? Very carefully and thoughtfully and with gel. Swift Drift says, will Minnie Jazza ever have a sibling? Who knows? Maybe. We're open to it. Sarah M, and this is a question a couple of people have asked actually, says, why do you stream during Australian school time? Because that's also Australian work hours. <laughs> and I work in work hours. But it works out okay in the end because honestly, uh, more than half of my audience is from America and it's a reasonable streaming hour in America. You're so never gonna please unfortunately, yeah, like most of my streams, like a quarter of my audience can't see it. It's unfortunate, but it's the way of the world these days. Everyone's in a different time zone. Yep. Kristen K says, it's obvious you fell for Mrs. Jazza, but what did she see in you? And then she writes JK, which I think means joking, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What did you I'll see? You. No, go on. What did you see in me? Oh. I don't know what she saw in me. When we met, I had a big chin beard and stole free food and lifts in the car whenever I could. She used to lick dinner plates. I used to lick dinner plates. I didn't present myself very well. So I don't know the answer to that question, honestly. Because you're a wonderful person. That, that's what she says, which is very sweet. So. You're a wonderful person. <sighs> and I always saw that you're a wonderful person. We're getting romantic in the vlog, let's keep Sorry. it Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, another question. How do you justify the insane amount of time invested in animating when the result is often so short? Says Sam Campione. I think different mediums give people different things. I think if I tried a different medium like painting, I wouldn't get the same reward, even though the work might, time investment wise, be perhaps less a lot of the time. I just think I enjoy seeing something come to life. So, you know, making games, it's a similar thing. It's like you press buttons and they move and they're alive. When you make an animation, there's a living, breathing character or something. That's what I get out of it. Okay. Naomi Nisansala says, have you ever looked at yourself and thought, I should be a model? Yes. Okay. Every day. <laughs> Every day. No, that is absolutely not true. <laughs> you could probably answer that for me. me. My darling wife tells me very kind things and I 
and very self-deprecating. So my wife builds my self-esteem, but he I am prone to self-criticism. He's not very confident about that sort of stuff. Um, okay. Hextechi says, do you still feel the pressure of having to improve your style? Yes, absolutely. I don't, I honestly, being completely upfront with you, many times a month don't feel good enough to be where I'm at, to be honest. And I talk, my, talk to my wife about it sometimes. I, doing the challenge of the month, I feel guilty that I'm nowhere near the skill level of these artists I'm giving first prizes to. I'm like, why are they entering my competition? You know, so. But it's nice to feel that way too, because it gives you somewhere to go. Okay. Lady French Horn. Ooh, I says, like French Horn. Lady French Horn says, What is your favourite cartoon, past or present? Treasure get? Planet's an easily nostalgic one for me. Hold the place in my heart, so I'll have to say that one. XX Manu says, How does your wife handle a hubby who's currently working in the arts world? What advice could you give? to possible pro designers and their spouses. How would you answer that? Be prepared to be poor. <laughs> and she was. <laughs> and <laughs> is. <laughs> For a while. Um, and... It's a roller coaster. Yeah, it is a roller it's coaster. It's up and down. It's very uncertain. Some, like there, there's several times a year we face the prospect of things going downhill very quickly and we're always on top of it and we work very hard but you know yeah it's yeah it, if you can make a living out of it you're doing really really well mm. and um, I was concerned about that for a long time I was serious especially having a baby mm. I was concerned about that mm. but um, we do make a living out of it which is awesome and once you get past that he loves his job so much that he's very happy. And that by extension, we're is all a happy. gift that yeah. makes all of us happy. Mm. Yeah. So that is, it's got you've got to weigh up those two things: the practical versus the happiness and getting to do the creativity and mm. work out what's best for you and the best way to do it for you and your family. Mm. Uh, what is it that gives you joy in art? Uh, going, I suppose, to a deeper level, because I've already said I love bringing things to life, but um, so I think on a deeper level, the idea of sharing a part of myself is what really hits home for me. So with things like the Draw My Life video, the composer animation, and even the Tale Teller, to be honest, these projects where it's a very vulnerable making experience, but it's genuinely a piece of who I am as a person. It's a really wonderful, terrifying, incredible experience. And as far as how people receive it, that can go either way. But I think once you go through the process and you finish it, that's really the best bit. You know, whether people love it or not, that's neither here nor there. I think finishing those sorts of projects is really self-affirming. So that's what makes sense. There's been a few comments about this actually, so it's a good question. Did you make your PC wallpaper? Mm. I get that one a lot. Um, I wish I could tell you the name of the guy right now, but no, he does these technoscapes or something. I just Googled colourful desktop wallpaper and went through hundreds of things until I found the perfect one and I've never changed it. So uh, I'll have to try and find the link and put it in the description or whatever, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I will do that. For this video, I'll put the link in the description because people keep asking for it and, and I'll find it, so. Okay, forgetting to say people's names. Sorry, peoples, I'll try to remember to say your name. Um, Tiago Pereira says, I really like to draw. But some days I'm too lazy to draw, or I don't want to. Should I force myself? Depends what you want to do with your life. If you don't quite enjoy drawing, and you don't want to do it for a living, then probably not. But I don't know, like... 
that's a tough one. It's sort of like, in the opposite sense, you might sort of say to yourself, would I force myself to study law if I felt pressured to do it and I thought that was the thing I should do? You know, like I think that the, re the reality is you do what makes you happy. Also keep in balance what is realistic and, and reasonable to expect as far as having a balanced future and sustainable income and living goes. But yeah, it's sort of, that's a, it's a tricky personal question because it's different for everyone, you know. I, I don't think I answered anything, but it's a tricky one to answer. Um, yes, it is. Mm. We've answered that one already. Have you ever drawn yourself with boobs? Oh, yes. No. Have I, you? No. <laughs> I have not seen that drawing. It's just locked <laughs> far away from human eyes. You have not. <laughs> I have. <laughs> um... Okay, you've answered those ones too. What other YouTubers do you recommend to watch? Ooh, okay. Hmm. As far as art YouTube goes, I think um, everyone has something really unique to offer, which is really special, and that's what I love about the YouTube art community. So, like, Will Terrell has this amazing character and aesthetic style. Uh, Mark Crilly has a technical proficiency that's somewhat unparalleled in the YouTube community. Bailey has an amazing ability to connect with her audience, Bailey J, I should mention, sorry, um, and a really aesthetically pretty style that's just really appealing to all ages. Um, Psychra Yasan has just this sharp, amazing, modern and incredible ability to create art of all kinds like there are so many art youtubers who can just it yeah it blows my mind um i there are more that i could think of had i not had four beers tonight but they're, they're some of some of the first ones that come to mind that i really admire okay adsu says do you feel like a secret agent when it comes to project greenwing yes no you hate it you hate not telling I hate that. not sharing it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hate but it. I'm I do feel like the secret agent thing in, in terms of if I told you I'd have to kill you. Like there is this sense of mm. like I just can't let anything slip and I'm very careful about that. But I really wish I could share something but I can't. Who is your favourite oh this is in oh, too many consonants. In vicinity. Oh, too many consonants. <laughs> that, uh, why did I choose to say that name? Who is your favourite stand-up comedian? Oh, Louis C.K. definitely. Uh, what was your favourite subject at school? It says Lucy J. I can say that. Close tie between uh, visual arts and visual communication and design and actually would, I think, go to Viscom or visual communication and design or graphic design, whatever you call it. It taught me the design process. It had a very modern approach to to art uh, from a design perspective, which I really enjoy. I loved the the history of art and fine arts and the painting and the hands-on aspect of the other class. But the Viscom stuff, the digital and modern approach, was something I really attached myself to. The Hidden Village of Art asks, "What's your favourite ice cream flavour?" Uh, pistachio. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I would have lost that in a trivia question. Ooh. I wouldn't have known what to answer. Um, Caitlin McCaggy. Mm. I shouldn't have had to pronounce that, so I'm sorry, Caitlin. So, what do you think are the best first steps to working to become an independent full-time artist? The best first steps? Step one, five years. Step two, three years. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the best first steps to becoming an independent full-time artist are be ready for a long haul. It is a tough gig. I'm just going to be completely honest. And it took 10 years before I could even start to, to pay the bills. It's really tough. But if you can power through it and if you can just crush it and smash it with social media, work hard, connect, be positive have heart and integrity and offer value, then you can absolutely make it. But the first step is to be ready for the long haul. We cut. 
<laughs> nah. <laughs> I can't. Nah. I can't edit the longer clips. I'm sorry. At the moment, we're at 12 minutes. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a couple more, but yeah, this is one of our less refined vlogs. All but right. that's okay. These people are committed at this point. Sorry, guys. They've, they've spent like eight minutes watching me take out the garbage. <laughs> sorry. It's true, though. Okay. Um, I'm skipping a few. Wade David says, "Will the book be in Africa?" And I'm, I'm picking that question because a lot of people are asking different countries, from different countries. Yeah. Uh, there, look, at the core level, there's distribution in the UK, Canada, Australia, and America. But it's also going to be in online shops like Amazon. So if you can buy a book from the US Amazon website, then you can get it in South Africa or in Yugoslavia or whatever. Um, and the answer is we're not really sure. We're not really sure. If that's out of publisher. our hands, mm. but it's as far as a physical book goes, going to be fairly accessible. And if you can buy other physical books from Amazon or, or you know shops like that, then I'm pre I'm sure you, you know these places do do international shipping to some extent. I'm not sure to what extent. We're not sure if it's going to be in your country. We it, hope. It, yeah, we, we really we hope. Certainly do. Um. How, or this is a good, best iconic, says, how do you get over being bored with a project if you've been working on it for a long time, like three years? That is tough. That can be very You get tough. bored, is the answer. You, you, you get bored. You mm. just go, you just slog at it. And you, it comes in ebbs and flows, and you'll find that for six or eight months at a time, you'll be bored, and it, you just power through it, and every now and then you'll be like, bam, oh, you'll hit a, you'll strike gold, you'll see progress, something will happen, and the flow will come. But if it's a very long-term project, the ebb comes shortly after that too. MZ Caracosta says, what animals do you have, and would you be interested in getting another cat? I don't know if MZ is going to volunteer a cat, no. <laughs> we do need to do an update on Max. Someone asked that about Max the other day. Okay. The, sh the short story is Max is doing a lot better than we expected. We have no idea why. We have no idea why. But we will cover that, that in a future vlog. But he's yeah. happy and healthy and fat now. So we'll we'll talk about we, that in a future vlog. Yeah, we, we'll give Max some love and attention. Genuinely in the vlog, but have no idea. We thought he was the vet said yeah, he was going to die. We so. thought he was very terminal. And who knows what situation he, he's in. We're not 100%, but he's... A heck of a lot better than he was because he was at death's door no kidding so. slightly miraculous but yeah. also we have two as far as future pets pugs. we have two pugs and a cat uh i don't know where we stand we don't plan on getting any new pets anytime soon we have a happy little family at the moment okay um did you ever and this sort of relates to the question before Kohai Chan says, did you ever have a problem with money and keeping a steady income when you first started as in the profession and do you still struggle with that now? We sort of answered that. I struggle less with, uh, this is specifically about money, which is an interesting one and I think it's worth addressing because honestly, I, I did struggle with money more than I do now as far as my management of money goes and one of the major things that's changed is I have my wonderful wife in my life who is a very wise person. I am not a wise person. And I, I, a long time ago, managed on, like let's say, when you, when you do the t type of work I do, you get paid in lumps and have empty times for unpredictable amounts of time. And this was at a period of time where I might have gotten five or $10,000 in a lump and then nothing for four to eight months. He doesn't see the four to eight months. I never saw the four to eight he months. So I'd have $8,000 so and I'd be like, my God, I'm rich. A I'll, <laughs> not a mulcher, but buttons. You did think so I would like specifically, sometimes I bought like music equipment <laughs> that was like $800 that I really thought I needed. And then all of a sudden I'm eating brown rice for six months because I have no money and asking for money or family to try and pay the bills, you know? So put money aside, plan meticulously, buy economically if you're self-employed, unless you have some sort of predictability. <laughs> well, let's take two more and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, Simon Frendo says, oh, uh, hold on. J or J Jabba 90, Jabber 90 says, is there any ETA on when your book comes out and how much do you think it'll cost? Another two things we don't have any control over. Yeah, we don't have control over that. We have suspicions. We suspect and hope that the book will be out before Christmas. We hope. We don't know. We're working really hard for it. Our submission is in mid-July. 
and that's for, for our work and assets. And then from there, it's in their hands. We hope that printing gets done, distribution happens, and that happens. Otherwise, at the latest, I would say mid-2017, but that's at the latest. Um, if the universe is fair. <laughs> and how much will it cost? Uh, we don't know. Do we know? Yeah, between... Even say? 20 to... Forty dollars somewhere in that. I don't know. I would suspect around twenty bucks, but who knows? Simon Friendo says, "How did you meet your wife?" We met in the theatre, the local theatre. We started off. So you were in Les Mis. She was Fontaine, and I carried off her deathbed. I was volunteering as backstage crew because I wanted to I, I was that was my stage in the spotlight I'd never been on stage before I was crew I was helping carry off her deathbed I was dressed in black so no one could see me I'm carrying off her deathbed just like look at all the people thought, <laughs> admiring God my was very happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> to carry off my prop um, I was very, I'd never been on stage before and I was a stagehand but I loved it and so I did that because I could, didn't get to audition but then I auditioned the next year where I was in Guys and Dolls and I got my first role and I was the lead role so it blew my mind but my wife was the choreographer a year later we played opposite in each other in Carmen the Musical a year later we played opposite each other in Joseph the Musical so we actually for years were very close friends and uh, not too long after that, we started dating and then we were married about eight months later. So, yeah, we, we met on the stage though. And, and uh, yeah, that's where we became good friends. And then eventually fell in love. Do you want any more? I, I think that's a nice note to end on. Plus, we're no, 19 minutes in think, just on questions. I think you should end this is on a this long one. vlog. Maria, <laughs> well, you, you can't miss this one, ever. Okay. Maria. Because I wouldn't know the answer. Shilda says, what would the world be like without llamas? Without llamas? Oh, I wouldn't know that. Well, the Emperor's New Groove would have never been animated and that would be a real loss for the... Connect it back to animation. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Obscure. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no editing. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. It's been a long one. It's like a 25 minute video today. And don't ask why I'm not on camera. I will, I will eventually. Maybe. She's very camera shy. Yeah. But she's very supportive of everything. I'm just everything, trying to help. So she's very helpful. Lots of love to my lovely Mrs. Jezza. <laughs>